coming in for a quick lunch break, and what do I find on my doorstep? A box. Didn't know exactly what it was, so we're gonna open it up. It turns out it's this here laser engraver. It's the Atom Stack. So I don't know if that's sufficient packing, but it appears to have gotten here in one piece. I'm excited to bust it open and uh, give it a good old fashioned review. Hey folks, Kenny with T7 Woodworks here. And uh, before we dive in, I just want to point out that I'm wearing a mic. And as you can see, I'm doing a voiceover. Well, that mic didn't work. So it's the last time you'll see it in any of my videos. Anyways, I just thought I'd point that out. Let's get to the review. Recently, an Atom Stack rep reached out to me and asked me to do a review for the T7 M30 portable laser engraving machine. Um, I actually thought it was the email was spam at first, but with a little digging, I determined it was a legit email, a legit request. So. I obliged. I was happy to do the review. Uh, I don't really do reviews on this channel, but uh, I figured, what the heck, let's, let's go for it. So uh, thanks, Adam Stack, for considering me. And uh, here I'm just kind of organizing everything before assembly, uh, just to make sure I got everything. Uh, right here, there's actually two nuts that I will show you momentarily that I was supposed to loosen, but they already felt pretty loose. So I decided against it, and I just put that uh, the X and Y axis pieces together. Uh, one thing I will note is Adam Stack did a wonderful job labeling all of the parts bags and making them consistent with the steps in the manual or in the instructions. And here are those two bolts I was telling you about. I'm actually just snugging them up now. And I feel like the whole thing moves pretty freely, which is good. That completes step number one in the manual. And now step number two uh, calls for these assembly pads, but they're those blocks you see there. And we need to just screw on the support components and just kind of snug them up. I mean, it's so easy, I could do it. And if I could do it, trust me, you can do it. And on to step number three, which is installing the bearings and the belt components. And here I am installing the bearings. This is what the belt is going to ride on. So it'll wrap around that. One thing that kind of threw me off is the belt is actually one strand. It's not a band. So you got to connect them in those little slots uh, and then they act as a band. But it took me a half a second to figure out what was going on there. But now that I've overcome that adversity, I think now is probably a good time for you to subscribe to this channel. Here, you'll see me struggle with all sorts of stuff, but you'll also see me succeed on a lot of things too. Such as installing this laser, which is very easy, might I add. And we can go ahead and finish up step number four by sticking these sticky little foam feet to the bottom of our supports. Step number five, cable assembly. I will say these instructions have it uh, pictured pretty clearly uh, how, to, how to wire this thing up. It's not very difficult at all, really. So you should have no issues there. And now, according to the manual, we move on to step number six, software installation. And uh, Adam Stack recommends we use uh, Laser GRBL or Laser Gerbil. I'm not sure. I've heard it said both ways, but we'll just go ahead and say Laser GRBL. And you can correct me down in the comments if I am wrong, which I very well may be. Install process, much like all install processes was a piece of cake. Just uh, go through the prompts and voila, you have the software. 
Uh, you are going to need to download custom buttons. Uh, that is very well laid out in the manual. So just kind of go through those steps and uh, you'll get your custom buttons. To plug in the engraver and uh, hook it up to the computer and fire it up. Uh, that process is also pretty darn straightforward. No need to really explain it. I uh, decided the first thing I'm going to engrave is my very first logo. Uh, Adam Stack included these little pieces of plywood for such testings. Okay, one observation I'm making here that might be important to note is this might not be a machine to use um, inside your house, as you can see. It gets a little smoky. Um, yeah. So this is going out to the shop as soon as I'm done here, and then we can play around with it some more. Or, uh, for what it's worth, I, uh, I decided to keep playing with it in the house. But, on the bright side, I didn't set off any smoke alarms. Uh, I'll just say, don't do that. Don't do what I do. Shoot, don't even do what I say. Just, just enjoy my videos and subscribe to my channel. That's all I ask. But in an effort to keep my house smoke free, I moved out to the garage. And uh, this is where most of my different materials testing took place. And first up was my old phone case. It's a plastic phone case or some kind of plastic anyway. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a really thin case. And uh, I wanted to see how it would handle under the laser. And all in all, I'd say this was a successful first attempt. Um, I'm sure there's some tweaking with the laser power and speed and everything um, that could make this really perfect. Um, the back of it, as you can see, bubbled in a kind of weird way, but it looks cool. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I would say that's a good first go. Up next, a piece of sheet metal. Um, this was kind of interesting results, as you'll see in a moment. And I have some ideas on what happened here. I expected it to be the same as the knife I showed you earlier in the video. I had the settings the same, uh, everything was the same, but the results were much different. And here you go. You barely see a little blemish of the logo. Um, my thinking here is that there is some oil residue on the metal itself. And that kind of interfered with the engraving. So more testing required. Okay, clear plexiglass. Uh, for obvious reasons, I don't recommend doing this. But it looks cool. So there's that. Um, the laser just shot straight through the beam, but it did crack it internally, left little like clamshell cracks going through it, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it also imprinted the SUS logo right on the plexiglass as well. Here is a really thin piece of plastic. This is like what you would get for a garage sale sign or something along those lines. Also not really recommended because it did start kind of warping as I was engraving on it. But what did actually engrave was looking pretty good until it started warping. So if you got a big piece maybe and you have it held down flat, uh, you might be okay. I actually do plan to do more testing with this material. I feel like you can do some cool stuff with it, with the right settings. All right, let's check out this laser. The, uh, the casing is very dirty, but uh, for this, I didn't record everything, but I did uh, engrave a lot of MDF, and that caused a lot of smoke. So just something to be aware of. Adam Stack did include a cleaning cloth for that purpose. And now we have a piece of aluminum flat bar, and the results here were 
rather astounding if you ask me. Um, I, I wasn't expecting this at all. I went two passes. And maybe I could have gone more. Nothing. Nothing at all. All right, now we're going to move on to bigger, a little more intricate designs. Uh, I decided to go with this tiger head, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it looks. I think uh, that came out wonderful. And uh, that is a piece of birch plywood, by the way, quarter inch birch plywood. And now uh, let's test how this bad boy cuts. Uh, I downloaded this little box pattern and this is over the course of three passes with probably 85% power on the laser. And again, this is quarter inch birch plywood. Um, as you can see, I could probably done another pass or even another two passes because uh, it did not want to pop out, but it did go through in some parts. Yeah, the, the results, uh, was not not what you would want, but I think uh, I'm not blaming the machine. I'm blaming my inexperience with the machine. Uh, I think with some uh, some more practice, I can get those cuts looking really clean. Oh, Splinter City! All right, so here is a recap on just everything I tried to engrave with this thing. And here's an actual image of one of my cutting boards. I actually plan to play around with images a lot more as well. And the reason those outside edges are dark was due to a setting I had nothing to do with the laser engraver itself. And this is actually a piece of cedar. Uh, and I find that cedar engraves pretty well, but the laser, you do need to tone the power down a little bit because it'll punch right through it. Same here, another piece of cedar, and I'm not exactly sure what those little dark spots are. I think it was a belt tensioning issue, which I kind of resolved, but they're still kind of there in this one. So more, more tinkering there. And this one is pretty detailed. Those lines are pretty fine and they look pretty clean. Uh, this is MDF. And here's the same one on a nice piece of walnut, which I will actually probably hang up on my wall. I also think this design would make some pretty darn cool coasters. Uh, let me know if you agree with me or not. And here is the Tony the Tiger again. Um, I did cut it out and the results were better, but I still had some chipping. I did do more passes. Uh, I think I just need to play around with the uh, laser intensity settings. And here's the piece I cut it out from. And it does fit in there perfectly, as it should. So, with a little bit more know-how, maybe the right material selection, uh, I would say you can definitely make puzzles with this machine. Oh, well, that's not really supporting my case, but again, with a little bit more know-how and the right material selection, uh, don't don't take this as the uh, as the be-all end-all because it's not. In fact, uh, when I become an expert with this little machine, I'll even do a follow-up video just to show you that I could do a lot more than what I am demonstrating. So. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can be the first to know when that video gets released. Again, back to this thin piece of plastic. Um, I'm excited to play around with this stuff a little bit more. I think we can make some pretty cool things with it, especially cutouts. Uh, I won't be doing this anymore, though. That was a little sketch. I actually heard it cracking underneath the laser. I heard those little cracks happen. Uh, so I wouldn't do it. And if you do do it, know that you're doing it at your own risk. And I thought it was appropriate to put my logo on this knife. And I made those scales in a previous video, which you can go back and check out. This aluminum flat bar is also another uh, material I'm going to go back and test some more because it did not do a darn thing. So more testing required there. And uh, same with this piece of steel. I'm going to clean it up real good before I try it again. Um, just because I know I can get results out of it. I've, I did the knife, so I should be able to do the steel too. Well, folks, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As I'm sure you've gathered along the way, I am very inexperienced with laser engravers. Uh, I am a noob as you young whippersnappers might say. But I did learn a lot, and I intend to learn a lot more, and I hope you learned a little bit along the way as well. It uh, certainly won't be the last time you see this little unit in my videos and in my work. Uh, I plan to really put it through its paces, and it will be making many more appearances, and we'll all learn a little bit more together. With all that said, I want to say thanks again to Adam Stack for letting me review their product. I think it's a fantastic little laser engraver, uh, even though I don't really have a lot of experience with them. I can tell you right off the bat that it's a superb introductory laser engraver. If you're looking to get into it, it's a good way to start. Super easy to use, super easy to assemble. It's even advertised as a portable laser engraver. And I think they're spot on with that because you literally can just take it wherever you want to take it. With all that said, if you're interested in owning one of these little bat mammer jammers, you can go ahead and click the affiliate link in the description below. Hey, if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so. I'll be providing you with more content just like this.